In this video, I am going to show you how to use the AV Audio Player class as part of the iOS framework to build an iOS Xamarin application that plays audio files. Now, I don't know for whatever reason why Apple has to make this so complicated, uh, but this is a little tricky, so let's get started by building a single view application for iPhone and go ahead and give it a name. I just named mine iOS Audio and get Visual Studio to get that built up for us. I always like to check in with my Mac agent to make sure that I am connected, which it looks like it's in the process of connecting, because then I can go open my GUI layout and get started on my application. So while I'm waiting for that to connect, we're going to be using the AV Audio Player class. And this is the class that is designed for playing back audio from either memory or a file. So this is not the class you would want to use if your app is doing any kind of network streaming or like low latency audio. Okay, so now that I have my UI open and I've got everything kind of visually set up the way that I want, we're going to come over to the Solution Explorer. We're going to right click on the project and we're going to add a new folder and we're going to name it sounds so by adding a sounds folder to our project we let that solution know that we're going to have these resources kind of these sound files in here and we can add in all different types of sound files but I have a, a wave or I'm sorry an mp3 file I'm going to add so I'm going to add existing item and on my desktop, I'm going to grab this applause.mp3 and I'm going to add that in so that the solution and the Xamarin framework and everything is aware that I'm going to be using this file as part of my application resources. And later, when you would package this up for distribution, so if you were going to submit it to the store, then all of these files would then get included. And there's actually one more step that we have to take to ensure that. You would right click on the MP3 and go to Properties, or you can open the Properties window. And here under Build Action, we would actually change this to uh, Bundle Resource. And so that would ensure that the sound file gets included with any packages that we create. Now, the way the iOS system does this is uh, you basically have to set up a class in your application that acts as an audio manager and inside of this audio manager class is where you would um, you know put all your methods and properties that you would use for starting the music and stopping the music and suspending the music and restarting the music and whatever you basically wanted to do with these mp3 files to be honest um, especially when compared with doing this in an Android environment this is a lot of work <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and provide this class file to you if you're following along with the kind of my lesson materials that I have posted and you can check out the card that's attached to this video uh, you can get this audio manager class file and then just come over to your uh, project and do right click add existing item and pull this class in let me walk you through this so that you can see what's going on in here so first thing first right we have some private variables uh, you'll notice I have a couple of using statements up here for using some various uh, uh, you know, AV Foundation, Foundation uh, Audio Toolbox that we need to use if we're either doing sound effects or background music or things like that. So down here under the public methods section, there's three different audio session uh, methods set up here. Activate, deactivate, and reactivate. So we don't want the music or sound effect or whatever it is that you're playing to continue to play when the app enters the background and so that's what these methods handle is entering and leaving the background and then there's just a, a basic constructor to uh, initialize you know and activate that audio session so that the um, the sound can begin playing now this play sound method is really where this all comes in and so it brings in a file name and it does some checks and everything to make sure that we stop any other audio so we don't accidentally have two audio files playing at the same time and it also allows for looping if you want to change the number of loops so finally the, the 
Other important part up here is in the computed properties. Um, if you want to change the music volume, you can change this preset computed property up here. And so, like I said, I provide you this class file because I honestly think that this is a lot of work for something so simple. And so let me show you how to use this class file once you have it uh, added into your solution. So I came over here to my main storyboard and I set up a button called Play Audio. And I just went ahead and I just named it Play Audio and I gave it a double click so that down here in my view controller, I now have my touch event for my play audio button. So now I just wire it up. I create a class level variable for my audio manager object. I instantiate that object in the view did load. And I can call play sound with the name of the sound that I want, including the .mp3 at the end. And then if I run this and test, when I click play audio, my mp3 uh, sound file will play. Like I said, you could come into Audio Manager into this uh, play sound method and if you wanted it to loop, you could change that. If you want to change the uh, volume that it plays at, you could change this over here. And then of course, if you want to stop playing the sound, uh, you can deactivate the audio session or you could even reactivate the audio session as needed. So that's basically how this uh, works. If you have any questions about the class uh, that I created here to make this happen, uh, feel free to send me a message. But for the most part, once you get this little audio manager class set up that you need to create in order to make this happen, uh, this becomes fairly easy. Now I guess it's not a requirement. You could come in here and wire up all this code directly into the view controller, but that's just bad pattern form. So. Uh, we, ha we have to make a little bit of an effort at using good coding conventions, even in these quick tutorials. So I hope you have enjoyed, and I, I hope this helps you as you move forward with your iOS applications, and you're now able to add audio sound effects and sound files into those apps.